death, resurrection, burial, week after week after week. Amen. And if you've been with the Lord long enough, you also celebrate Him day after day after day. Amen. Amen. I don't just serve Jesus on Sundays. I serve Him every day. Amen. 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 No one's got a gun to my back. Nope. Amen. Either telling me to stop <coughs> praising Him or to start praising Him. I walk with the Lord because he has changed my life forever. We all have had experiences in our life that we've been tempted to lay down and say, Lord, I just don't have anything else in me. And then something happens that all of a sudden we get re-infused with another dose of the Holy Ghost, which seems to put life back in these old dry bones once again. And I hate when we go through times like that, but I'm so grateful that when the times of this life come to make us feel discouraged, downtrodden, that the Lord will lift us back up again. My goodness, when Jesus can come out of the grave, as Brother Marty would say, death could not hold him. Amen. Amen. There was no sin in him, so, so death had no power to keep him. Amen. Amen. We know that the Romans, along with Judas and the high priest there of the Sanhedrin court, they all conspired together to destroy Jesus and his ministry and his life. Paul wrote to us and said that if the devil would have known that Jesus was going to come back from the grave again, he never would have crucified him, which tells us that Satan was the real mastermind Amen. behind the crucifixion. Oh, yes. But people <coughs> helped him. Oh, yeah. Woo, how many people have helped the devil to help bring hurt and destruction to you? Absolutely. Amen. Ultimately, we know that our battle is not in the natural realm. It is in the spiritual realm. That's why we must be people of prayer. Amen. People too often lay down and they don't fight. But Amen. we are commanded to put on the armor of God and fight. Amen. 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 Right. We are to fight till our last breath on this earth or until the trumpet sounds. Amen. And I'm looking for that trumpet Amen. to sound. Amen. I posted the message this morning from Revelation chapter 4 that we did on Sunday night here a few weeks ago called Come Up Hither. There is a day the trumpet is going to sound and we're going to hear it say... Come up here. I love the Lord, and I know you do. I'm so glad to see you. We have so much to be grateful for and so much to be excited about because Jesus, the living Lord and Savior and ruler of the universe, lives on the inside of us. He has reunited mankind with God if they will call upon the name of the Lord. There is a day coming, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that he is Lord. But if you don't do it on this side of the, of the judgment, it won't matter. Amen. Amen. They'll have to admit he was Lord, but it won't produce salvation in them. But on this side, glory to God, when we make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of our life and accept him, <coughs> our name is written. Amen. So much to be thankful for. I want to talk to you this morning. I have been thinking about an aunt of mine who I love dearly. Uh, I met a lady who uh, got me thinking about an uncle. She uh, had a, a, a British sounding accent. And she was a black woman that I delivered materials to she sells books from home she has an internet business and i said where are you from and she said uh, i am from guyana and i says oh in south america she stepped back she said you're the first person i've met who didn't think that guyana was in africa <laughs> i said well an uncle of mine my uncle alvin he went to guyana back in the 70s and she said, well, a lot of people come there and do missionary work. I said, that's exactly right. They came as a quartet 
They were called the Revelation One. That was my uncle's singing group. They went down there to sing for the people in Guyana, wherever doors would open for them. And I remember he told stories about the cockroaches were about that big. He said, they're so big, they call them mahogany birds. He said, yes, they do. <laughs> and it got me to thinking about my uncle and my aunt that I loved dearly. Every time you would see my aunt, she would finish, not maybe every sentence, but pretty close to it. She would finish it by saying, and everything. <laughs> and everything. Uh -huh. And everything. It's just so endearing. I, I don't say that if any of the family is listening for ridicule. It is just one of those endearing things that I love about my Aunt Joyce. <laughs> and it got me to thinking this week that Jesus is our everything. Amen. And you remember that old saying, anything and everything. Amen. That is the Lord that we serve. He is anything and everything. Amen. He brought to us something so wonderful when we accepted him. How many when you got saved were a little bit scared what it might mean if you gave your life to Jesus? Depends on how young you were. Mm -hmm. I was uh, 10 years old when I got saved. Oh, when, I, when he saved me, it didn't seem like there was a lot of past <laughs> to wash away by his blood. Amen. It had only been alive for 10 years. Maybe you were in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s when you became a believer, when you accepted Jesus into your life. It might seem like you had a whole lot more to wash away of your past and your sin of the things that you might have done or did do that are now so far in the past. Neither God nor you should remember them. No. Amen. You're right. Aren't you glad you're not that person anymore? Amen. Right. Now, he is our anything and our everything. I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 28. It's a wonderful place in the scripture. You know, as we celebrate the resurrection, and again, we talk about Jesus' resurrection. Oh, every week somehow it slips into just about everything that's preached, right? Because if it wasn't for the resurrection... Our faith would be in vain. Starting in verse 1, this is after Jesus had been crucified. He is in the grave. Remember, he died. Now, I'm from up north. And the tradition up north is on Good Friday, businesses close from 12 to 3. It's a very strong Catholic atmosphere in the north. And it dominates what's on the menu every Friday. Fish specials everywhere. Oh, yes. Amen. And there's some good eating too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because Catholics are not supposed to eat meat during the Lenten season and only eat fish on Friday. You know, unless you forget. Okay. <laughs> now, this right here kind of surprised me when I moved south because I thought I'm moving to Bible Belt where Good Friday doesn't mean too much. Churches would be open from 12 to 3, and people were invited to come and to pray. Amen on Friday, what we call Good Friday. Amen. Just the churches would be open, people come, pray, seek the Lord, and then there would also be an opportunity for communion sometimes. Sometimes wait till Sunday morning on Easter to have communion together, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. So when I moved south, I was a little surprised that Good Friday is just kind of another day. Amen. So that was surprising to me. Here we find that there are some women who love Jesus' ministry. You know that when Jesus was crucified, it was <clears throat> devastating. How people process this. Because they thought, as they said, he was the one who would come to redeem the people. They did not understand, could not comprehend why he would have to die. And when he told them so many times that if they tear this temple down, I'm going to rebuild it in three days. 
There's no other sign going to be given unto you but that of the prophet Jonah who was in the belly of the whale for three days. Amen. He kept telling them things that should help them to say, Lord, you got to tell me more about this dying thing. Remember, Jesus said when they went to Jerusalem that he was going to die. Peter said, Lord, they're not going to kill you. And if they did, they may as well kill me too. Because I'm going to die with you. That was some great boldness. Oh, yeah. Amen. Now, he stayed close to Jesus, but he betrayed him. Now, we know that Jesus being crucified, death couldn't keep him. Amen. 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 Now, Peter, what if they would have grabbed a hold of him? What about when they said, oh, your speech betrays you. We can tell you're one of those who followed him because it sounds like you're a Galilean by your accent. Oh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. And he began to even curse. Oh, yes. yes. And then when they didn't take Jesus. Peter began to wail after he heard that rooster crow because he knew he had betrayed the Lord who I just told. I would die with you, Jesus. These women, as Jesus was crucified, because in the Jewish tradition, you have to be buried before the sun sets. When Jesus died, they gathered his body up quickly. And they took him to bury him. And that is why on Sunday morning after the Sabbath was over, they came then to prepare his body mm -hmm. and to bring the ointments. Because they didn't have time before he died. Because it's too late in the day. Now here we find in Matthew 28, starting in verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord had descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and he sat upon it. Can you imagine that, that angel just sitting there on top of that stone? <laughs> and I'm sure angels are a lot bigger than we are. Oh, I doubt yeah. there's any five-foot-six angels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that if that angel was strong enough to roll away that stone from the mouth of that tomb, that cave that Jesus was buried in, and then just sat in there, and I think he had a hunch <coughs> that those ladies were coming. And he was waiting with a message for them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, what, the, what is said? Says he rolled, he sat upon it, his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow, and said to the women, Fear ye not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Amen. Mm. Can you imagine being those women standing there? Don't you think when they said he is not here, don't you think their knees started to get weak? Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. I'm sure their first thought is somebody's come and stolen his body. Oh, yeah. He is not here for he is risen. Amen. Nobody ever got that message before, did they? Mm -hmm. Come see the place where the Lord had lain. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. Lo, I have told you. Look at this next part. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear. That word fear here means with awe. Can you just imagine? The anticipation. We're going to see him. Remember last time they saw him, he was on the cross. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. He had his own. Jesus spoke to John, the apostle. Remember that was his cousin. And he said, take my mom. Mm -hmm. Escorted her away. The last time they saw Jesus, he was dying. 
for them. Yeah. And this next time they see Jesus, he is risen from the dead. Amen. It says that they departed and they just kind of slow walked. It does not say anything of the sort. You remember when you first gave your life to Jesus and you tasted of salvation. You remember the lightness and the quickness that it put into your step that you had to go tell somebody what has happened to you. Oh, yes. I remember telling you about my daughter. She was two years old or so when we kept telling her, there's going to come a day, honey, when Jesus is going to come and knock on the door of your heart and say, I want to come in. And her response was always, I don't want him. I thought, well, we're supposed to train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they're not depart from it. Well, she kept saying, I don't want Jesus. I don't want Jesus. Well, the Lord had spoken to me on a Friday. I remember that. I don't remember the date of the day that she got saved. But he, the Lord said, Kayla is ready. I said, okay, Lord, I'm just going to watch and wait. So that particular weekend came. Here's Sunday morning service. No response out of little old Kayla. But one Sunday night when we put her to bed, kissed her goodnight, read her a bedtime story, walked down the steps, and all of a sudden, Daddy! said, what is it, honey? You know how that is with the kids, you know? <laughs> one more thing, one more drink, one more something. I said, what is it, honey? I need you. So I went upstairs. See, my wife at that time, she got to pray with our son to be saved. Kay was calling for dad. And I said, what is it, honey? She says, I want Jesus. I said, well, sweetheart, let's pray. Amen. Let's ask Jesus to come into your heart. Remember, Amen. she's just a child. That's right. But when the Lord starts to speak to your heart, there is something that changes on the inside of you. It puts a likeness in your step. Yes. And so we prayed, and she said, I want to call Grandma. Well, it went, she had to make like eight or nine phone calls to the people that she loved because she's got to tell them. Right. Jesus just came into my life. I've got to tell somebody. Remember, it was just a short time she's been saying, I don't want him. Amen. To now, all of a sudden, i got to tell people because Jesus came into my life and i got to tell somebody. Amen. So the ladies here who came to Jesus' tomb to do what? To anoint his body for his burial that he didn't get to have before he died. He is now going to be meeting them Amen. as they are heading off to Galilee. Amen. And so they departed quickly from that sepulcher with fear and with great joy. See, they remember that Paul wrote in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All of a sudden, these women, these now brand new evangelists just heard the gospel message that Jesus is alive. They believe the message that Jesus has raised from the dead and now they've just gotten born again, praise God. And Jesus, as they started to head off, they now got great joy, which is the sign of the believer. Amen. We ought to have not just happiness, we ought to have great joy because Amen. Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to think about these particular verses. If you're taking notes, I want you to think about this. Remember I was telling you about my aunt. Jesus is our anything and our everything. Amen. We ought to have Jesus on our lips all day long. Don't you think? We ought to be talking about the Lord when the sun comes up and when the sun comes down. 
You know, when I go to bed at night, I never finish a prayer. How about you? <laughs> Amen. I had a good talk with the neighbors yesterday. Those, uh, the mother and her, uh, her uh, adult son. And that son was saying, you know, I hate when I go to bed, I can't turn my brain off. <laughs> he said, how do people do that? I said, well, I'm your man. <laughs> he said, you mean you can sit around and think about nothing? I said, I sure can. <laughs> he said, how do you do that? I said, I don't know. It was just a gift. Amen. He said, I've known people. I mean, I told him, I've known people who tell me this very problem. I said, my wife takes an ambient, takes an hour and a half to calm her mind down until she can finally give in to that sleeping pill. Mm -hmm. Amen. But me, she says, I just take a melatonin just as a placebo. Yeah. <laughs> she said, because you're going to fall asleep anyway. <laughs> It's like, well, I just swallowed my pills. I better get in bed right quick, you know. <laughs> Go lay on the pillow. I never finish a prayer when I'm going to bed. You know, Lord, thank you for what you've done. <laughs> you can't get much further than that. Now, listen to these verses. Jesus said this before his crucifixion. If you're just taking notes, I'm going to try and go through these a little bit quickly. He is our anything. Jesus said this in John 14, 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. He is our anything. If we ask him anything in his name, what is too difficult for the Lord? Yeah. Remember that song? Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for the... See, if you don't know Jesus, you don't know that there are no impossibilities. Remember when that father came to Jesus and he said, if you can do anything for my son, heal him. Amen. And Jesus' response is, my favorite part on this verse comes out of the New International Version. When Jesus said to him, if you can. <laughs> I love that question mark right there. If you can, if you will believe anything is possible. Amen. To him that believeth. What is impossible with God? Nothing. Nothing. Amen. You remember when Gabriel appeared to Mary? Remember, first he appeared to John the Baptist's dad, and he didn't believe, so he ended up having to be quiet for the next nine months. Yeah. Well, his wife was pregnant, and it wasn't until they went to dedicate him, and they asked, what is your son's name going to be? All of a sudden, when she writes John... Elizabeth we're talking about. People say, well, you can't name him John. There's no way in your family named John. All of a sudden, Daddy got his voice back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! His name is... Don't you think people step back right then? Oh, yeah. His name is John. Amen. See, he had heard from God. Yes, he had. Nothing is impossible. Then Gabriel appears to Mary. Well, how can I become pregnant? I've never known a man. And Gabriel just explains to her the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and you will conceive. <laughs> and her words were, be it unto me according to your word. Amen. For with God Nothing shall be impossible. Right. First Corinthians 2 2. Paul is talking here to the Corinthian church about his style of preaching. Remember one time he preached so long, somebody fell out of the window and died. And Paul says, uh, Nobody's going to die in my service. <laughs> he said he preached so long, the guy fell asleep and fell out of the window. <laughs> No, 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 no. You bring that young man in here. That's right. Hey, man. We're going to pray. Yes. Nobody's dying in church yes. tonight. That's right. Amen. Amen. And Paul says this, For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ. Amen. And him crucified. Amen. Jesus is our anything. Yes. I don't know anything. 
I remember I was talking to a young guy one time. He was telling me some of the bands that were popular at the time. I just played dumb. I said, never heard of them. He said, you never heard of rock and roll? I said, no. What about country? No, I don't know anything about that. I said, what do you listen to? I said, I listen to music about Jesus. Amen. Amen. I said, it's called gospel music. Amen. Well, they sing that at church. I said, I know. It's awesome. <laughs> I said, who needs any other music besides music about the Lord? That's right. Amen. Amen. I think he knew us playing with him after that. But <laughs> Here's something else from Jeremiah chapter 32. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything that is too hard for him? When you think about Jesus dying on Calvary, and if you would have been walking with the disciples, and Jesus said, uh, they're going to kill me, but don't worry, in three days I'll be getting back Amen. up in here. Amen. What would your reaction have been? Shock. Uh, Jesus, uh, I don't know about this one. I believed everything else that you saw. You made me a believer. Amen. But this getting out of the grave stuff, I don't know. There's nothing that is impossible no. for God. No. Oh, yeah, it sounds impossible. Oh, I was trying to watch the History Channel the other day. I like documentaries. And they were talking about why it had to be impossible. Amen. <laughs> for a man to come back out of the grave because that just don't happen. <laughs> Guess what? When God is in the flesh. Amen. And Satan defeats him at death, it looks Amen. like. Amen. He's coming out of the grave. Oh, Amen. yes. If Jesus didn't come out of the grave, we're miserable, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians oh, chapter 15. Yes. Right. I, I've been miserable. And that was when I knew Jesus came out of the grave. Mm. But he brought me back up. He lifted me back out of that miry clay and put my feet back on a place that I could lift my head back up again, no longer be in despair. Yeah, I got some despair stories in my life, trust me. Yeah, you're right. But I don't live there anymore. Amen. No, you can't. And if those days ever try and sneak back on me again, you know, every time I go through those things, I come back out of it a little faster the next time. Because I learn some things. Amen. Now watch this. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in Him. Amen. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Oh, Amen. yes. Do you believe that the Lord hears you when you pray? Yes. Yes. I met plenty of folks who hope the Lord heard them when they prayed. They hoped. They hoped. They hoped. But John wrote here, this is the confidence, this is the assurance that if we ask anything according to his will, he, he hears us. Yes, he does. I have to put something that makes your shoulders go back. It ain't because of what you did. Amen. Nope. Amen. It isn't even necessarily that you were the one who prayed. Amen. Amen. Because we know from James' writing, said if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray. It's about people praying. Amen. 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 Sometimes you're too discouraged, you're too downtrodden, you're too distraught, you need somebody to pray for you and let your healing come. Amen. And sometimes you just got to have that assurance on the inside of you, not that when you call on someone else to pray for you, that God will hear and move, Amen. but that when you call on the Lord, I've got the assurance that he heard me. And then John goes on to say, and if we know that he hears us, we have the petitions that we desired of him. Amen. He is alive if we ask anything in my name, he said. I will do it. And then back to my aunt's good old phrase and everything. Psalm 150. I love this. 
We're going to end up, if you want to turn over, over to Psalm 150, the last chapter there. Jesus, excuse me, David is writing here. And he says in verse number six, let everything, amen. I just love the way my aunt used to say that. And everything. And everything. And this says, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. All right, let's do some breathing exercises. Let's just see if there's any dead here this morning. Amen. You have breath on the inside of you? Mm -hmm. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And then it goes on to say, praise ye the Lord. I had to say it a second time. Amen. 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 One is, if you have breath, you need to praise the Lord. Yes. And then he just says, so praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Why do we have to sometimes be prodded to praise the Lord? Amen. There ought to be a song in our heart. Jesus came out of the grave. We ought to have a quickness in our step. That awe and that excitement, that great joy that, that is effervescently swelling up on the inside of us ought to give us something to tell people who have no hope. We have hope, we have faith, we have courage, we have belief because Jesus came out of the grave. Amen. First Thessalonians, chapter, uh, second Thessalonians, chapter 9, verse 10 and 11 says, Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. Praise God, we know that the Lord blesses when we give our tithes and our offerings, that there is a a fundamental blessing that is coming in our way and it's called, he's opening the windows of heaven to us. Amen. Because the Lord is preparing us for the world to come, but he's also taking care of us while we're down here. Oh, yeah. That's why he gave us giftings and talents and abilities. Okay. So he said he will multiply your seed sown and increase, increase the fruits of your righteousness. And then he says this in verse 11, being enriched in everything. Enriched in everything. You ever wonder how Jesus took your raw talents and developed? You ever wonder, because he's, he's making us bountiful in this life. We have a purpose. We have giftings and talents. You know those people that you're jealous of? They're kind of jealous of you too. They might not tell you about it. You know, I remember talking to a buddy of mine one time. I always loved his personality. He was the outgoing guy. He was the one who always could make people laugh. He was always the one, all he had to do was start talking. And he just had that personality. People are just laughing. It's like he didn't even say anything funny. I mean, I loved him and I loved being around him. I loved just what came out of him. But it seemed like everything he said would just be taken humorously. You know, and here I'm a serious guy, and we were good buddies. You know, and I was just so jealous because I always wanted to be the fun person. You know, my youngest brother one time, we were texting back and forth, and I said, you know, I'm the funny one. He said, no, you're the responsible one. <laughs> he said he was the funny one. Well, I was talking to my buddy at one time, and he, surprisingly, as jealous as I was of him, that he had that personality that would just make people laugh and have a great time, he was jealous of me because people would take me serious and he couldn't say anything that, that he felt was serious and they would take it and laugh at him. Mm -hmm. Because something about him just made people laugh. You know people like this. Yes. Maybe you are that person. People, you want them to take you seriously when you're serious, and here they are just laughing. Oh, yes. That's, and so I found out that I was jealous of him, but he's kind of jealous of me. Isn't that funny? I mean, some of you sisters, you know, that have a sister, you know the awkwardness of things that you love and hate about your sister. Brothers can go through this too. We have different natural personalities that God has gifted us with. Mm -hmm. 
when we love, when we give, when we apply ourselves to the things of God, he is going to enrich us in everything in our life. Amen. Amen. I'm not just trying to be a good Christian. Jesus lives on the inside of me. He's going to affect everything I do. Amen. Amen. When you're out in public, do people look at you? You know, we can be walking through Walmart and little kids always just stare at my mind. Every aisle that you go down, the kids, they just start looking at her. What is it that they're seeing? And sometimes she'll say something to the parents, but she just, just keeps on going. Sometimes she'll just do this and keep on going. People should see things in us. Amen. I find that at my job when I come in at the end of the day, more and more people are starting to say hello to me. Some that you said just pretend that it exists. <laughs> Amen. But word is starting to get around. I walked into the office a couple weeks ago, and one of the uh, dispatchers said, uh, Hey, Mr. Lewis, is it true you're a reverend? <laughs> I said, uh, Well, I am. He said, Well, reverend. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He said, uh, he said, because I, I saw in the paperwork that you had a doctor. He said, uh, should I call you doctor? <laughs> I said, no, you, you can just call me Brad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. says, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing in Everything Amen. and give thanks. Amen. Now, there's a place for everything right there. Are you thankful? Remember when Jesus came up from the grave? The message was go tell my disciples and go tell Peter. Can you imagine the brokenness Peter was in? Could I have stopped them from crucifying him? Could I have stopped this? Not knowing that this had to be done. Jesus had to die for the sins of the people. Mm -hmm. He had to in order for us to be redeemed back to God. He had to be redeemed. And yet Peter, in these three days between the crucifixion and Jesus' resurrection, you can just imagine the torment that he's in, that I betrayed him. Could I have helped? And the word had to be given to Peter. He's alive. Mm -hmm. Peter was so distraught, he even went back to fishing. Remember, he had a fishing business. He, did. he and Andrew, with James and John, they were also in the fishing business. And Jesus had to go back out. Come on in. Remember, that's where that, we, we sang the song about it. Come and die. Mm -hmm. I make fun to my wife because she doesn't like fish for, for food. <laughs> she, and I always say, you know, when Jesus said to the disciples, come and die, he, was, he had made them a fish dinner. Amen. <laughs> Out there on the shoreline, come and die. And I, you know when Jesus said to Peter, do you love me more than these? I can picture Jesus standing right there holding the fish. Do you love me more than these? Because Peter had gone back to fishing. Well, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus asked him three times. He started to get mad about it. Jesus told him, go feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Go feed my lambs. That is when Peter, all of a sudden, had a true restoration that the Lord was not going to hold that betrayal against him. Mm -hmm. oh, no. He was not going to, and who was the first preacher on the day of Pentecost? It was Peter. Yes. My goodness. He gave that first altar call. 
3,000 people accepted Christ at that very first altar call that day. Yeah. How wonderful. Do you think he knew that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us, Lord, forgive me, cleanse me, separate me from that situation that I maybe could never get back up from. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. And then Psalm 50. Let's read this whole thing right here. Starting in verse 1 through verse 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. When you hear the birds chirping, do you interpret that as they're talking to God? Mm -hmm. Amen. There are people who love the sounds of nature, not even realizing that creation itself yeah. is praising the Lord. Nature is a gift to us from God. If you have breath, praise ought to be coming out. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You got breath? Amen. Amen. You sure do. You do. You have breath. Praise Him. I am an everything. Aren't you? I am an everything. And I know <coughs> that in everything and let everything that has Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. We can stop right there because if he came out of the grave, what circumstance is too difficult for him to deliver us from? Amen. To set us free from. To change us out of that pit of despair into a place of hope and a future of a plan that he has made for us. He is my anything. And he is my everything. Amen. Amen. Let the praises of God and his resurrection be something that puts a quick step in you that you got to tell somebody I sent a video out, out yesterday on the prayer page. I'm not sure if you had time to look at it. It was of a minister. He had gone to get a haircut from his favorite barber. It was a beautiful story, wasn't it? Beautiful story. And while he was at the barber shop, his regular guy was gone, and they sent someone in who had all this spiked hair. He said she had piercings everywhere on her face, tattoos, and he got all scared. To let her cut his hair. Got a little scared. But he just decided I'm just going to be quiet and take a nap. And just trust that she does a good job. Well. First question from her. You know, barbers love to talk. What do you do? What do you, where do you work? And he, he was the pastor of the church just down the road. So he told her that he worked at the church. He named it off. She said, I was just there the other day. I mean, I'm sure he was shocked. <laughs> you were? Yeah, I went to the bookstore. My mom watched that movie, <laughs> Left Behind. Mm -hmm. You never know what part of your testimony mm -hmm. is going to touch and draw somebody to the Lord. Oh, yes. You never know. My mom was a cocaine addict. 
And after she watched that movie, she asked us all to watch it with her. We don't know anything about God. We don't know what to do. He went inside. Or, I mean, he told her he would be right back. Went and got her a Bible. Said, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about Jesus so you can get saved. How wonderful. Amen. So many times we lose that quickness in our step. We get a little shy, a little timid. Let's put that bushel basket over us. I said, don't need my light shine here. I ain't got time to talk today. Sometimes the Lord loves to interrupt our schedule. Yes, he does. I'm too busy right now. I'm just going to hide. Set in the background. Don't let anybody notice me. But the Lord says, no, take that bushel basket off. It's time to let your light shine. Amen. Let that quickness that's inside of you, that great joy that's inside of you, bring about you got to tell somebody he is alive and he has changed my life. And I know when this life is over, I know I'm going to be with him Amen. forevermore. Lord, we thank you that you are our anything and that you are our everything. Lord, let those words begin to just, Lord, effervescently begin to bubble up on the inside of us once again that we hold on to the promises of God. Lord, that we can't 